One of the worst things you can do for your photography is to try and force an image. So one of the best things you can do for yourself is to just put yourself in the right environment at the right time and let the inspiration and the image come to you. Now, of course, that's easier said than done. And this is particularly true for forest photography, which really is probably one of the most complex environments there is to photograph. But it's also one of the most peaceful and calming places to be. So if you're looking for inspiration, it's probably one of the best places to put yourself. In this video here, I'm gonna share with you some forest photography tips, but more importantly, I just want you to come out and hopefully get a bit, a bit of inspiration for yourself. This shoot was just something that I had to do. I hadn't picked up the camera for a couple of weeks and this location is about 10 minutes from home. So I just timed the visit during the golden hour in the afternoon and it was just exactly what I needed. And we ended up getting an unexpected guest during the shoot and it just made for an incredibly memorable moment. So I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you pick up a little bit of inspiration and you can get yourself out in the field too, because it's so important for us photographers to just keep being amongst the landscape. And that's where the inspiration always is. In the forest, Take your time, slow and steady. It's a fantail. <laughs> Take your time. If you try and rush, you're going to miss the shot. You need to get into the rhythm of the forest. You'll start to see the images as your eyes adjust. Just sitting down for a minute and just taking it in. Photography is the cure and we can overcomplicate it and overthink it. So many times I've found just coming out, just coming out into nature and not forcing any images, just, just being in the moment and then it has a way of presenting itself to you. For this frame here, guys. One, two, three, and then the sun star just poking through. There we go, that's the comp right there. Look at that. Now, in order to get that composition, I'm probably going to have to lower myself. Now, three is a great number because it's an odd number. It keeps the eye moving. The sun star, I don't want too big, if at all. But I like having that light there as a, a nice reference for the eye. Might, uh, come back slightly. See, if you want to get a sun star, you need to have the light hitting you. See, it's whacking me in the face, and then if I edge myself across, it's no longer hitting me. I won't be able to get a sun star now. The lens needs to be at this point here. Just a little bit of light coming in and out, but just go easy with the sun stars. Do some frames with it and then without it, because sometimes they can be a little bit distracting and take away from the image, but... So it's just moving yourself left and right, so you can get a big sun star, little, no sun star. And then you just move back and forward. And then the more you close down that aperture, the more points on the star. There's no right or wrong, but we're, the main thing is we're bending it around an object, the light. It's bending around the trees. That's the, the first thing, irrelevant of f-stop. F-stop is not as important as having that sun partially blocked there's about four of them right here. Look at him, right in the foreground. I need the wide angle. Let's put the wide angle on. We're going to put the wide angle on, try and incorporate these uh, fantails in the frame. They like this branch. I'll put it on focus stacking. Wide angle, I can get the 
sun star in the back as well. Where is it? Where's that sun star? There it is. Let's see if they come over back to this bridge. Come on. These little guys. Wow, what the? I don't know if he's going to be sharp. Ah, they're so quick. I'm trying to get the whole scene sharp. Again, I'm not going for a wildlife photo. I want a landscape photo with a, a wild animal in the foreground. <laughs> Pushing our luck. But you don't get it if you don't try. Definitely, he's sharp there. <sighs> Use the light as a way to pull the eye through the frame, foreground either in the shade or very minimal light, which is what I've got now. I don't often go vertical with the framing because you just pick up a lot of sky. And the sky is distracting. I want to keep the eye flowing through to that background. Right in that same section I've been for the last half an hour as the sun's moving it's opening up new opportunities here look at that just angling downwards so i don't get too much sky in making sure i've always got nice big shapes there big trunks photographs incorporate something near as well as the details that you have far away if we go over here the scene is still nice but all the details are further away if we incorporate something close bang like that now we have the perception of depth the near and far 